What's up, grinders? Over the past week or so, I've been checking out Awakened Chaos Air, a new gacha game projected global release in early 2022. So I want to get my first impressions. And for those of you who don't have a week plus to get into a game to figure out if you like it or you know if it's your type of game, I went ahead and broken down the game in a lot of different categories. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into it. As far as visuals go, the game is very clean. I, I do enjoy its visuals. It's not another one of those anime type of gacha games like, you know, Epic Sevens and Seven Deadly Sins and stuff like that. It has very clean graphics. I wouldn't quite put it on the level of something like Raid Shadow Legends, but it's very clean. The character models are very interesting. You don't really see many. Yes, there are some, but you don't really see many reskins or copy pasta type of champions. It has very clean graphics and it even goes into more 3D CG I kind of cutscenes in battle which you know if you're into if you're into visual stunning graphics it, it really kind of adds to the game as far as its general menus and main screens and things like that I do I would say that it feels a little cluttered there's there's so much in this game there's you know 50 different buttons and tabs and everything that honestly at first glance it can look overwhelming but all in all, I would say graphically the game is very clean and um, for those people who don't really like the anime, t anime style uh, games, then this should check that box off for you pretty nicely. Combat. Now combat in this game, it, it's a little more simplified than some of the other gacha games that I've, that I've um, played, but that could also be due to the champion pool and you know the fact that it's so new, a lot of the mechanics hasn't been flushed out. It, really does have a more strategic placed battle system nothing that you know uh, an average gamer couldn't figure out but definitely has room for the theory crafters out there to be able to play with manipulate with and, and find synergy in between champions and teams the ai for the combat system it doesn't seem very intuitive but to be honest there it, there's not a gotcha game out there that i've found or, or an auto battle type of game out there that i'm really happy with their ai the, you know the, the computer does dumb things and hopefully maybe over the you know it's developing years we can kind of you know develop and grow into a, a more fine-tuned combat system now speaking of combat there is something called spells which is kind of unique to some gacha games in uh ace awaken chaos era i like to refer to it as ace um that i find pretty interesting there are some op spells there's two slots that you bring into combat so you can choose two different spells and they have cooldowns and you kind of use them you know you'll your team will use them as you go there are some that are, are very strong very um strategic and then there's some that seems to be very niche very focused for future content possibly i'm not exactly sure one thing that I do love about this combat system for Ace is that it already has multi battles. You know, if you're part of the grind squad, you know we love grinding, and you can't always be at your, you know, your mobile device or your computer or whatever to hit that grind. So AFK farming, such you know, as auto battles or auto clickers. By the way, auto clickers are not sanctioned um, by the game developers, so you know, be be careful, or rather, just don't use auto clickers which is okay because they have a decent multi battle system in here it's 10 per round of auto battles i feel like the number of auto battles should be raised um, especially if they're going to let us just do it unlimitedly unlimitedly anyways then you might as well you know if you don't make it unlimited at least just raise the bar from 10 battles per run other than that the buff and debuff system inside of a uh, inside of ace is really nice i do like it i would say it's probably one of its best in mid combat mechanics if you cast a you know a buff on your team uh, at the end of a wave you know you're going through the trash waves you cast a buff and you take out the last champion those buffs do carry over to the next wave which is something that i really like in previous games you know you've had these situations where you know the ai system will use a skill when it, you know the the last enemy is just a few shot you know a few hits away from dying and it kind of wastes it and really doesn't line up for your next wave or next you know combat initiative and again i would like to touch on the cg the cutscenes that i mentioned in the visual part of this uh, as well they are very nice very clean i'm sure a lot of work and effort went into them when you're farming or progressing or you know you're just trying to get through an area of the game that really you're sure you can beat or maybe have beaten you know dozens and dozens of times before 
I think it would be really nice to be able to switch off the CG cutscenes because when you're outside of auto battles, which I they do they are turned off inside of auto battles, but when you're outside of auto battles, they're not turned off. And for people that that's not really you know a big thing for them, they they like the progression and the chant building and stuff over the visuals. Being able to turn that off would be very nice. Next, we have our champ system. Now, the champ system in this game, I would I would say is probably one of its higher rated systems in the game. I really like what they did with developing your champions. They there's honestly this could be, you know, you kind of consider this one of those waste not want not type situations. They they didn't they didn't leave much in this game that could be wasted. All of your spare trash gear, spare trash champions, everything is a material or a component to upgrading the champions and gear that you do use now, which I really do like. I think giving a use to every part of a game can really open up the potential for your player base to be content, if not excited, about every little thing that they get or, you know, um, whether they're auto farming or you know they had a bad summon session anything they know that they can get use out of it such as their ascending which is pretty huge to me that the ascension in this game for your champions is is their dupe system honestly the power of your team is a little bit t determined on if you summon dupes with the champions you have you know a lot of people like to collect one of every type of champion some people just like to build out you know a few core teams and make those teams the most powerful they can and the ascension dupe system in here does that very well the same thing can be said about skilling in this game skilling in this game is actually a lot easier than a lot of other gacha games out there skilling in this game is based on their element there's elemental dungeons in this game where you can go and farm up these materials to level up the skills but it's not just the skills, the level, the gear that makes your champion strong. There's also a glyph system, which would be kind of like a promotion or an enhancing system, which is actually one of the heaviest grinds in this game is glyphing your champions. And they did a very good job in it because they allow you to farm your glyphs by farming out the campaign in the game, which I really liked. Next, going on to gear. As far as gearing goes, I'm a little on the fence about this. They have a lot of the same, you know, kind of set styles and stat styles and everything else that a lot of other gacha games have. And some of the sets are really strong and, and you know, really strategic and just in general, you can look at it and be like, yeah, I know characters that I want to put this on. And some of the sets are just kind of underwhelming. You, at the current moment, grant, granted this is you know pretty early in the development of the game, I don't see much use for and would be just kind of like um, food fodder for the rest of your gear. The stats in the game, pretty much what you would expect from any gacha RPG game, but there is a couple, uh, couple new additions in this game that I find interesting. One would be the deflect. It's kind of like a grazing hit or something like that where if you if you get a deflected hit it does 50 percent damage rather than the full 100 percent damage which i kind of like it isn't exactly you know connected to like elemental affinities or anything like that it's just one of those things where you didn't get a clean hit and there's stats you can build into that to increase your deflect and stuff and then there's another stat that i haven't seen since final fantasy brave exvius um and honestly it's a very strong and op stat but this isn't a stat that you can cultivate to build your champions into that you can farm there's some you know every champion has this stat but not but only some champions are really designed around this stat. that's the dodge stat very effective i remember you know making dodge tanks and you know dodge provoke tanks and things like that in final fantasy brave exvius and honestly it can be very op maybe that having that in the game now will allow for crazy builds and team synergy in the future to tackle to tackle you know difficult content I'm, I'm really excited to see if and what they would do with the bosses and strategy needed for future for future content and if dodge skill is going to be in there now getting down to the, the meat of the game the content what does what all does it have to offer to be honest i've heard this be um a complaint from some other content creators and while I do see the point of, you know, having a game that has so much content that it overwhelms you, coming into the coming into the scene even before official release, global release, having this much content in a game 
is actually pretty exciting to me. The content of the game is, is very thick. It has a, has so much to do. And one and a few of the things that I like is that campaign will be important. The campaign, the storylines, what a lot of games would consider you get through campaign after campaign's done. You move on to other pieces of content. You don't really come back to campaign much other than maybe, you know, XP farming or whatever. Campaign is actually in-game important. Beyond just the XP system, you actually come there to farm your glyphs, which you're going to need for building up any kind of champion. As far as other content in the game, we have dungeons, gear dungeons, elemental for ascension dungeons, a void tower, very nice. The game's coming out starting with void tower. It has multiple difficulties, as well as strategic trials, something called endless trials. It kind of has a fun, you know, tiled board kind of style gameplay where you progress from one side to the other. And, and beat enemies and acquire resources such things. Outside of the hard grinds of campaign and dungeons, it also has shorthand ba battles, such as bounty and dispatch. Bounty is something where you kind of go challenge, you know, a specific uh, enemy, and it gives out resources, just kind of a, you know, a little resource farm. They give you five keys a day, so it's not nothing that you need to farm hard for. None of the battles so far seem to be all that long or you know insane strategic anything like that it's just kind of develop your champions go through the go you know go through the battles get your rewards uh dispatch system it's a it's an afk resource farm it's nothing that big now one thing that they have really went big into on uh ace is quest there is quite a few different uh quest trees in this game they have foodie quest which are kind of like they actually have three steps to the foodie quest that's kind of like your your tutorial quest line. Then you've got your dailies, your weeklies, as well as an area of the game quest, you know, for development, farming, you know, combat, different things like that. A lot of resources come through this. Now, this would just, this uh, up to this point, it all just sounds kind of like, you know, a, a regular RPG. So far, I have not even talked about the gotcha system. The champion pool in this game, to be honest, it's a little it's a little sparse. We definitely need quite a bit more champions in the game um, with more focused kits and you know to offer up more synergy and options when building out our, our teams. But all in all, I will say that it's a very generous gotcha system. As far as shards go, um, there's about four types of different shards in the game. Uh, you have your your normal summoning shards where you get a lot of your your food champions, your commons and uncommons, such things as that. Then you have your advanced summoning shards, which are your rare, your rare summons, your your elites that they call them in this game, your epics, your legendaries, things like that. That's where you get those. Then they have the ultra rare kind of shards, where it just has a chance to give epics and legendaries. And then they have Lego shards. These are straight Lego shards, so very interesting, very kind of crazy on that. The Lego rates are also very nice in this game. For your rare shards, your advanced summoning shards, you have a 1% chance of pulling a legendary out of that, as well as a pity system that's actually built into the, the summoning, the gotcha system, where you're pretty much guaranteed a legendary at 101 shards. So every 101 uh, of the advanced summoning shards, you're guaranteed a legendary. But then there's also other shards that have an increased chance for legendaries. The ultra rare, the epic and legendary pool shards is at a 10% chance. And then with the Lego shard, it's 100%. That's something you don't see in many gacha games. There is literally a 100% chance for a legendary shard in the game. Gotta love those whales, enjoy, and buy them up. Also, there are special summons in the games. I would mention the event currency and stuff before. They actually have a summon currency for special summons. For other gotchas, you can kind of consider this like uh, banner summons, but you don't use your um, your usual means, your, your usual currencies to make these summons. There are event points that's given out, and you can summon off of those. There's other ways besides summoning to get champions in this game, as you know, most most games like in this genre have, and a uh, few of them are synthesizing. Actually, it's kind of like a fusion covenants, which are quest based. You know, you go out and finish quest and you get these champions. And actually the champions that come out of the covenants are four high-end champions. One of the best farmers in the game you can get purely from just doing, from questing, from just playing the game. They have one Lego, two epics, and a rare. And all four of these champions that you can get from the covenants, as it's called, from the quest-based summoning, is very strong champions. Uh, they honestly, they they might have went a little too generous with that, but I ain't complaining. And then another way besides the uh, the synthesizing or fusion and the quest-based covenant 
uh, summon there's matrix kind of like summoning materials you collect so many of them and you can summon that champion you've seen similar things in i believe summoner's glory had had a system similar to like this but many ways of getting the champions in this game unfortunately we do have a low champ pool so you know it, it you kind of it's kind of not hard to get a lot of the champions in the game pretty quickly but as we all know gotcha developers they won't let that sit for too long i'm sure they will be pumping out more champions now to get more into the community type of vibe for the game clans guilds in the game honestly i i haven't joined like you know a super proactive super you know clicky type of clan i'm just in a clan that you know progresses and does you know the clan events so as far as the community vibe so far I'm, I'm unsure i'm unsure coming from raid shadow legends i really love a community vibe when it comes down to these types of games uh, honestly community can be one of the the biggest highlights of these type of mobile games um so I'm, I'm still kind of excited to see how that goes i'm only a weekend so we'll see but the the guilds do have levels so there is a reason for everyone to come together and stay loyal to your clan and build and grow with your clan as well as weekly rewards from the boss battles as well as a few other ways that your guild your guild members can help you um such as uh matrix help I, I mentioned the matrix summoning with the materials up there they actually have that in this game so you know if i believe you can only request elite rare champions right now and some of the rare champions are really strong but i'm not exactly sure to me it kind of currently it just kind of seems like a way of helping acquiring more food champs uh so you know i'm not exactly sure how well that's going to pan out but you know it's there it will help and another thing that the guild has is a guild shop the guild shop also has levels that scales with your guild levels and it has a lot of really good resources in there so all in all you know we went through you know what the game looks like how the combat and champ systems play out with the gearing and everything the content that's available to you and the gotcha system and the guild but you know you can't have a, you can't have a mobile game without monetization so as far as the monetization goes, yes they're the dreaded pop-ups but no they are not as bad as polarium's uh you know very aggressive marketing boy goes but they are kind of pricey not as much as raid shadow legends but they are honestly in my opinion compared to some other games that are a little more free to play generous or low spender generous uh they're, they're a little pricey so you know this isn't going to be one of them games where majority of the player base just buys into the end game and that's what it is yeah it's going to be you know some mega whales but uh I, I see that being a lot less of a problem most of the 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 pack pop-ups come in the form of summons energy ascension materials which uh, in this game is their dupe system and honestly is kind of rough on ascending champions all in all it, it has a nice spread of what they're focusing on what they have to offer for their packs so if you are a spender whether you're someone who wants to focus on on you know energy and building your champs you know for your for your buck or you just want that dopamine rush for the gotcha system uh, you know they, they got something for everything as far as other monetizations goes they do have a battle pass in this game um, and it's re relatively cheap ten dollars for a three-week battle pass I believe it's three weeks uh, it's not too bad and the resources in the battle pass are really nice other than that they have the usuals monthly cards event packs uh, even some free packs you get in that shop check it out if you're a spender I'm sure you'll find something you like now, if you guys have been playing gotcha, gotcha games for a while, then you are aware that, honestly, sometimes these things can feel like a chore. So when you're looking at a new game, it really is smart to look to see what, what what's the game going to require from you on a daily basis. So the daily routine for this game. Honestly, there's so much to do in this game that you could easily put 8 to 10 hours into this game every day granted given that you have the energy just in building champions conquering a few new dungeons doing all your you know your your dailies and your quests and you know all of the little this that and the other kind of content that's in the game you know pumping out a few boy tower levels whatever but uh the dailies don't include everything as as much content that's in this game the dailies don't include everything a few dungeon runs here a few dungeon runs there a few arena battles things like that oh and guild boss of course and honestly that's that could be it like you can get all your dailies done i'd say in an hour maybe two if you're in some of the more difficult content 
Now one thing, and I'm not gonna talk on this long, but I do wanna touch on it, is the arena, the PVP. Everything up to this point has been PVE. I do see some potential in synergy and strategy in the game. This game doesn't rely so heavily on speed, so the speed metas, you know, not so overwhelming like it is for a lot of games. You can build stall teams, stall tactics. The arena, it, it honestly deserves a whole video on its own, but I'll, I'll knock out some of the some of the points for it. While it's not very progress or uh, competitive yet, it actually does have progressive reward trees and stuff, and it's required for daily, so it's actually worth doing some battles every day. The meta is pretty basic, so a lot of any, you know, you don't need special champions to really get through it or anything like that. And honestly, I find it to be just one of those things that you, you get in there, you knock some out, you get your rewards, you complete it daily, you, you bounce out. But for those people who, who will want to grind it out hard, who's very big on the PvP factor, it actually has a lot to offer in the future. It's got quite a bit of tiers and rankings from Bronze 5 to Legends, and the, the seasonal rewards for those are actually very nice. High-end summons, some of the, the rare summon shards that I mentioned earlier. They've got a leaderboard, um, and this is actually also a place where you can farm gems at. Not many, you can't like actually just auto sit there and auto farm, you know, up a thousand gems. But I think you get like 50 daily. So 50 daily over, you know, a month's time or a season's time. It, it, add, it adds up. It's pretty decent. As well as you farm arena currency. There is a shop. There is a shop in this game for just about anything. And we'll go ahead and talk about that now with the, the, the market system. The market system that they have is actually pretty crazy. I do like it. I do enjoy it. They've got for, they've got a shop for your guild. They've got a shop for arena. They've got event you know, event shops, gem shops, gold shops, which gold is actually very abundant in this game. So you buy out the gold shop. There is um, a lot of resources acquired from the shop, from summons and energy and ascensions and, you know, glyphs, skill, elemental stones, like just anything you can need in the game can be bought in the shop. So all in all, man, going over, I broke down a lot of this game. I actually have a, um, a word, a notepad, a word document that, is rather extensive that I wrote down for this video, but I'm gonna try and edit this thing down to as short as possible. If you've got any kind of context to give you any kind of insight to whether it's gonna be a game you enjoy or not, please hit that like button for me. All in all, I will say, I give the game a solid four star out of five, you know, in like the, the, the Google Play Store. I, this is a game that I will be playing. You can expect to see more videos on this and possibly, you know, I'll be streaming it. So, till next time everybody, happy grinding. May the shards break in your favor. Peace.